Now let's get into uh, the kind of roles that we're seeing nowadays, Joel. Um, obviously, we see a lot of incredible roles, but what RB3 said right before the break, we're still getting kind of the same old, the help, uh, white savior type movies, uh, at least the ones that are getting recognition. We still see that a lot. I mean, how long ago was that movie? Like six years ago? It wasn't like 20, 30 years ago. Um, and that's the movie that, w- that got a lot of recognition. However, let's shine a light a little bit on the positive. What, what do you see positively that's changing? Man, uh, what I see most positively is because of the internet, uh, Black creators have a direct outlet to their mm-hmm. Black audience, right? So before, um, I mean, we took it all the way back to Oscar Michaud earlier, you know, he's carrying around his films, trying to get them from the eyes of the people who need to see it most, the people who will pay to see it, the people who will value it as art, which is the constant struggle of the black artist. I think because the internet exists, because we have such genius creators, uh, Ava DuVernay is obviously like Mountain Peak, like Mm -hmm. example, Um, but also... Who's homegirl? I'm having such a brain fart. Uh, she's doing the horror movie, Candyman. Oh, you know? I know who you're talking about. Uh, no, I we got to say her name. Hold on. Oh, let's do it quick. Oh, man, I feel bad. No, no, no. It's good. We're going to find it. Well, also, Casey, Casey Lemons, too. Uh, Cassie Lemons, Cassie yes. Cassie Lemons, yeah. She is the shit. She, Cassie is everything to me. Cassie, uh, if you don't know Cassie Lemons, Cassie Lemons started with Spike, started in theater doing costumes. So all of the outfits in uh, Do the Right Thing, that's Cassie. In School Days, that's Cassie. Then she goes on to direct her own movie, the biggest of which is East Bayou. But she's got a couple of others that are like, really interesting, usually dark and gritty, usually not anything. Um, she's not concerned about the commercial, right? She's concerned about mm-hmm. telling these interesting, weird, one-off black stories that are not meant to appeal to the entire diaspora, which I think is great. I think so many times black artists are struggling to create for all black people. Just mm-hmm. such a task to ask any artist to do. And frequently it makes their movies muddy or... <sighs> available for white consumption at a rate right. that can be troubling like oh it, right. it applies to all audiences um so i really like what cassie does why are you not showing me the 2020 uh, version of candy Nia da costa nia da costa yeah. yes nia is coming up doing fabulous things this is a woman who understands horror and i feel like women direct horror so well if you haven't yes. seen nia's movie little woods it's about the opium epidemic which is rampant in this country hardly talked about mm. at all despite the fact that thousands of people die at the least weekly but i want to say it's a lot of people dying every day because they're addicted to this drug that is given to us by doctors that is pushed to us like any yes. other drug dealer in the street and she tackles mm. this movie with such grace and vibrata and it's so moving and dark but also such a story of survival excuse me and i think when we think about women often in film and we think about them as survivors we have to go to the hardcore extremes of like a laura croft or something like that or mm-hmm. you know or a slave movie or a 12 year like oh gosh so harrowing poor lapita how did she get out of there but like being a single mom living in a trailer or being a sister who's responsible, who has entire family members, none of whom can keep their lives together. And so you have to do it yourself. Like these are the stories of actual human beings that are happening every day that are just as harrowing, that are just as important. Um, And I think that's really the change that we're seeing in our modern stories is that it's no longer an investment in white, in our visibility for white people, right? A Mm. lot of films like are explaining Please understand our humanity, white people. Please see the struggle we go through, white people. Please see us as humans. We'll, like, raise our pants up. Don't shoot us. Like, it's literally pleading with Americans to to recognize black humans as human, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of work to be doing. Uh, the great Toni Morrison, it says that racism is a distraction because if somebody tells you your head is shaped wrong, you have to constantly prove, no, it's not, but you can't get any work done because you're explaining yourself to other people. Mm. I think we've removed that distraction or we're in the process of attempting to remove that distraction from our current black cinema because we have a bunch of black creatives able to talk with one another via social media because they're able to raise money through that because you can see the numbers, the number of people watching them, the number of people who like the content they're creating. It makes, or at least gives, 
it removes the ability for studios to say this is not popular or this won't sell or people don't yeah. like it because it's in uh -huh. everybody's face. We can all see it. Um, yeah. I think those are the, the greatest changes that we're making in our modern day movements. And, and, and it comes from the idea of what RB3 always talks about, which is putting more black creators behind the camera yeah. uh, and in positions of power, whether it's producers, executive producers, presidents, vice presidents, having their own production companies, telling the stories they want to tell and portraying it in a manner that they want to portray like. Um, Mia DaCosta, Ava DuVernay is obviously probably the GOAT of that. Yeah. Uh, um, I want to shout out uh, director of Queen and, Queen and Slim, and I always mispronounce her name, so um, Andres, you might need to help me out here, but oh, no. Malia Matsukas? Matsukas. Matsukas, yes. yeah. I'm mm -hmm. bad pronouncing names, so. It's okay. Yeah, yeah Malina Matsukas, uh, who's great, and if you don't know Melina, you, you know her work. She's done a ton of music videos. Uh, her most famous is Beyonce's Lemonade. She directed yeah. a lot of the shots Matsukas. on the plantation. Um, she has like, I love, I got to interview her earlier this year for cultured no and she, yeah, I interviewed her and Lena Waif, their best buddies and their best friends with like Solange, which is like the coolest group of <laughs> individuals on the planet. But Melina talks about like her inspiration comes from like national geographics and her father did like portraiture, like he did photography. And so that's why in a lot of her movies and a lot of her music videos and things like that, you get just people staring at the camera in that weird, like staggered, but looks like effortlessly cool positioning. Uh, if you think of Solange's wedding photos, that's Molina's style, right? Um, she is such a badass and such a great director. She has such a an understanding of space, which I find to be one of the most interesting aspects of cinema is how do you control not just what people are seeing, but like the size of things. How big is the earth that you're looking at? What's the angle from which you approach it? And she's always got such a photographer's eye that it becomes very interesting. Mm -hmm.